Namaskar and a very warm welcome to all of you on this edition of COVID-19 Fact File and Vidhi Kumar. Today we are going to focus on an extremely important topic of India's immunization program against COVID-19. Well, it's been a very healthy start uh, in a country like ours, given the scale and magnitude of people who are we, we are dealing with health workers, over 2 lakh immunized, inoculated. And of course, uh, we have to go into the second dose as well to make this a complete process. To talk about this and more, we are joined with Dr. Sujata E. Matthews, Associate Professor, uh, ABVIMS, and uh, Doctor at uh, the RMLH Hospital. Many thanks for joining us today, ma'am. Indeed, a Thank pleasure you. to have you here with us. Namaste. Thank you. Ma'am, uh, to begin with, uh, we'd like you to tell our viewers today about India's vaccine platforms. Uh, there are two vaccines which we already know, uh, COVID Shield and Covaxin, and two of them are in the third phase of trials. One is Zydus Cadilla and the other is the Johnson one. I'd like you to take uh, some time and explain uh, all these platforms, ma'am. Okay, thank you. So uh, right now we have two vaccines which have been rolled out. The first one is the Covishield vaccine, which is a viral vector chimp adenovirus vaccine. And uh, this has been uh, developed in collaboration with Oxford. And it has been produced and the phase three trials have been completed. And uh, it is genetically engineered uh, to carry uh, genetic information inside the viral vector into the human cells, which produce uh, SARS-CoV-2 proteins and therefore induce an immune response against the virus. So that is Covishield, uh, produced and manufactured by the Serum Institute of uh, India. The second vaccine that we have is the Covaxin vaccine, which is an inactivated uh, viral vaccine, which uh, contains the complete uh, vir virion, which has been inactivated. And uh, this has been developed, as everybody knows, by ba Bharat Biotech in collaboration with the ICMR. And uh, this is also an injectable vaccine. And uh, it is uh, given intramuscularly and uh, then again induces an immune response. And since the uh, vaccine is inactive, inactivated, it does not cause the disease, but it induces the host cells or the uh, human cells to produce antibodies and immunity against the virus. So these are the two which are already in the vaccination program and are being received as we speak. Then uh, th there are certain other vaccines which are uh, under un currently undergoing phase three trials in which includes the Zydus Cadilla vaccine. Uh, that is a slightly different technology because it's a DNA-based vaccine. So it's a nucleic acid technology and it's a DNA-based vaccine and that is being um, developed in Ahmedabad by Zydus Cadilla. And they are presently in the uh, phase three uh, trials. So uh, they will take some time to come out with the data for that. The Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine is actually developed uh, in the US and Belgium by Johnson & Johnson. And this again is a modified adenovirus uh, viral vector vaccine. And the advantage of this is that uh, it will probably be 90% effective even after a single dose. And that is why there is some excitement about, and they will come out with their final data, I think by the end of this month or in another uh, week or so, they are due to um, give more, give us more information and data about this vaccine. But that would be uh, not an indigenously produced uh, vaccine, but uh, that is uh, the excitement is because they say that it is providing efficacy so far in the phase two trials even with a single dose of the vaccine. Till now, we are having uh, to give two doses of most of the vaccines which are currently being used. Now, what is third uh, phase trial? What do you mean by phase three trial for the general viewer, for the general public? Okay. So phase, there are various um, trial modes. So initially, when a vaccine is developed, there's phase one, which deals with 
safety issues and dosage. Uh, the phase two uh, assesses immunogenicity or the ability of uh, the vaccine to produce protective immunity or antibodies and assessment of that. And phase three is finally done when the vaccine is then given to um, a larger number of beneficiaries and uh, we mm. assess the efficacy again. So in phase three, already in phase one and phase two, you have already data regarding safety of the vaccine and uh, regarding its uh, ability to produce or induce immunogenicity. So phase three is only that it is uh, conducted in a larger population and uh, to assess for efficacy. But it doesn't have a safety concern because that has already been um, conducted in the phase one and phase two trials. Right, sir. Uh, coming to my next question, uh, tell us what is mutation and what is this new mutant strain that has come from the UK? How lethal is it? Uh, will it make vaccine ineffective or will the vaccine be effective even with this? Right. So uh, mutations refer to alterations in structure of a gene. And such alterations can then alter the proteins uh, uh, which are present in the virus and then lead to variant forms. So normally yeah. also these mutations occur by chance. And uh, as yeah. time goes or as the pandemic uh, rolls out, many viruses, this happens with other viruses as well, even the common flu and influenza, they undergo various mutations. And uh, some mutations will lead to certain changes in the uh, viral proteins. Uh, now, the with respect to SARS-CoV-2, the UK strain uh, we have identified in which there is a mutation which leads to the alteration in the structure of the spike protein. And therefore, it was a, a bit of a concern. It was found that it actually has a, a greater affinity for the receptor and therefore is probably more infectious and can be easily transmitted about among humans, human to human transmission is uh, more than the previous strain. So that is why it was of uh, concern. Um, but we have no evidence that it is causing more severe illness or uh, that it is more lethal than the previous strains. So this is a normal course which uh, many viral diseases take. And with time, there are various mutations. Some may be insignificant and some may be significant. But there is no... Uh, definitive evidence that it is causing more severe disease or more lethal infections. Definitely, there seems to be a probability that it is uh, more infectious than the previous strain. But a lot of the times when a virus is more infectious, it is usually less lethal because uh, the viruses which are more lethal, they kill the host and then the transmission stops there. So uh, we have to keep them um, you know, under the scanner and uh, study these mutations. And the second part of your question is whether it affects vaccine efficacy. Now, usually vaccines are target multiple um, aspects or multiple components of the virus and not one particular protein. So such vaccines which are targeting multiple components and multiple proteins uh, of the virus will still be effective. Until the virus accumulates a lot of mutations, it is unlikely that uh, it would be able, just by one or two mutations, it is unlikely that it would be able to escape vaccine-induced immunity. But still, we have to put them under the scanner and uh, study the genetic sequencing and uh, this thing, and only time will tell. But there is no evidence that the current vaccines will be um, ineffective against these strains because, uh, like I said, the vaccines usually target multiple components of the virus. Right, ma'am. My newspapers have been reporting that India is starting trials for a nasal vaccine, which is first of its kind in the world. Can you tell us more on this, ma'am? Right. So, uh, this is the nasal vaccine, again, is being developed by uh, Bharat Biotech, and it is again a viral vector vaccine. And the advantages is that it can be administered via a nasal spray in the nostrils. 
so this has a huge advantage because it eliminates the need for needles syringes and um, trained healthcare professionals for administration so just like we had the oral polio vaccine the ease of administration will be significant and also uh, there are data that suggests that it would stimulate uh, immune cells within the upper respiratory tract within the nose the mouth and probably the lungs which would be effective in reducing the transmission uh, of the disease once you are vaccinated and the other thing is that it uh, will probably be a single dose vaccine which would be even better but uh, phase trials are ongoing so we need uh, final data and uh, everybody is excited about it uh, so we are hoping that it will be a, a good option for us Mm. Looks sounds promising in any case, and then you don't even have that ache and pain, and it just blocks the virus. Ma'am, how is the government planning to monitor for vaccine? Reports say that uh, this is in the trial mode. Uh, could you please explain what trial mode means? Okay, so uh, you, this is with regard to co vaccine that you're asking. Okay. So, uh, co vaccine has been uh, allowed or approved for restricted use in the trial mode. So that means that actually the, their phase three trials are ongoing, and uh, but they the vaccine has still been approved because of the previous data in phase one and phase two trials which show safety and efficacy, and uh, considering that we have a very large population and the risk benefit ratio goes in favor of uh, administering this vaccine. So even though it is in trial mode, this is phase three, they've already got preliminary data of their preliminary phase three, phase one and phase two have already been completed. So uh, this just means that, of course, you have to, uh, you know, get the vaccine under informed consent and this thing, but there is no real concern about safety. Efficacy, of course, has to be evaluated for every vaccine later on it takes about a year or two to actually see the efficacy of any new vaccine. Right, ma'am. Uh, there's, there's some people who have been uh, giving us a lot of queries. I think it's written on the Covaxin vaccine uh, itself. But if I'm taking an aspirin or if you're you know, allergic to something, you're averse to some kind of a condition or your diabetes or you're, there's some kind of comorbidity, then you cannot take the vaccine. How would you like to, uh, you know, give us more clarity and elaborate on this one. Okay, so any uh, vaccine will have uh, certain contraindications in which case uh, uh, we would not li like to give the vaccine and some, some uh, um, conditions with, in which we are cautious in uh, giving a vaccine, especially a vaccine yes, which uh, is under trial mode or uh, which has not completed uh, phase three tri trials. So uh, that is just a cautionary measure, but uh, definitely like other vaccines, uh, any severe allergic or anaphylactic reactions to any previous vaccine, injectable therapy or food for that matter, um, usually vaccines are avoided um, in such groups of population. If you have a bleeding disorder, then also it is avoided because these uh, injections have to be given intramuscularly. So, if uh, you have a platelet dysfunction or a platelet disorder, that may be an issue, but it is not an uh, absolute contraindication for it. And uh, probably after we have more data, these uh, uh, COVID shield is already can be given in uh, people with certain comorbidities. And even Covaxin, as the data is uh, more robust and uh, more extensive, it will may probably be improved even for uh, people with comorbidities, but that will take some time. So at, at the present moment, they may be excluded, but uh, as and when we have more data about the efficacy and um, side effects, it may be applied to the other populations as well. Right, ma'am. Uh, I now want to ask you a question that is on everybody's mind. A vaccine normally takes about 18 years to make. Um, we at uh, uh, India have made the vaccine in less than, say, um, a year. How's that been possible? Okay. Uh, so that's an interesting question. 
but um, we already have a very advanced and uh, national immunization or universal immunization program we have the serum institute of india the icmr and various other uh, research organizations uh, not only in india but across the world and there's a global collaboration called gavi the vaccine alliance which uh, so it is a shared kind of uh, effort and as far as uh, the two indian va the vaccines which have been rolled out in india they have come out quickly because they are allergies the viral vector vaccine that is the covi shield using an adenovirus has been used in various uh, vaccines earlier the technology as well as the inactivated uh, virus virus or the co vaccine so these technologies have already been there and they have just been applied or reapplied in the context of sars cov2 so the technology was already there and they have been applied with respect to uh, sars cov2 the novel technologies include the dna and rna uh, vaccines which were not there available for any other uh, viruses earlier um, so those are the novel ones but the, the good thing about them is they don't require viral culture or growth and they are created through a uh, genetic engineering and synthetic process so as mm. far as the uh, advancements in genetic engineering and uh, biotechnology have gone so that's why these novel vaccines uh, have been nucleic acid vaccines uh, mrna and dna vaccines have been able to uh, roll up ma'am another question is that uh, what is uh, meant by restricted use or use uh, authorization under emergency use let us know that so um restricted use in an emergency situation first of all the key word being emergency so the right. pandemic constitutes an emergency so when we have a disease which is um, affecting a large proportion of the population as such as this current pandemic and causing a significant public health or economic impact it is considered an emergency so we have to um, we cannot wait if we have a tool which can mitigate the effects of the public health emergency we should use it because uh, phase 1 and phase 2 has already uh, done safety and efficacy you know trials and we can roll out a vaccine even sometimes a vaccine may be rolled out even in phase 2 if uh, the administration or the government feels that it ha it is beneficial for the population and it would uh, benefit to mitigate the effects of the pandemic and therefore yes restricted use because the clinical uh, trials have not been completed and uh, extensive data is still awaited but since all the previous uh, phases have shown uh, extensive benefit uh, which is undoubted it has more of benefit to the population than risk so the risk benefit ratio is more tilts towards benefit to the population and restricting the effects of the pandemic uh, and therefore uh, it has been uh, rolled out in restricted use considering that the present pandemic has been and is a public health emergency absolutely ma'am uh, talking of the pandemic uh, how better prepared do you think we need to be uh, could this just be a trailer or could we have more outbreaks maybe of the same one or maybe more how do you look at healthcare ma'am in india as far as um, the present pandemic of sars cov2 we have had uh, pandemics and epidemics in the past we have them almost every year but uh, the extent of this pandemic the large number of population which was involved was definitely very challenging and uh, this reiterates uh, that we should have commitment and uh, towards health infrastructure building health infrastructure as well as to, in order that we are prepared to deal with such uh, public health emergency situations as far as um, that is as far as the health sector as as well as investing and in infrastructure regarding 
technologies in biotechnology, genetic engineering, and vaccinology, so that we are able to create. That is how uh, Bharat Biotech and the Serum Institute, because they already have the infrastructure, were able to come up with a vaccine. So we have to uh, reiterate our commitment towards uh, public health issues, towards um, funding and uh, for proper infrastructure for the health or vaccinology for new technologies. And that is uh, uh, also being done in the present situation. So we cannot take anything for granted and we have to be prepared and we are prepared. Um, to allow it's doing very well now that uh, we have uh, the vaccine maitri program going on. We are supplying vaccine to all our neighboring countries and that to at uh, no cost. So uh, how do you think we should now uh, prepare ourselves as the whole world is combating um, the new mutant, whether it is, uh, you know, UK or California or any other place? We, we have a little time on our hands because our mortality is is, is okay. I mean, uh, we're not really, really being affected so badly as the other countries. Is this not a time to introspect, prepare and be more on the guard? What would you like to say? Definitely. Uh, and therefore, the rollout of this vaccine program comes at a very uh, good time and it's a golden opportunity for us to take this time to, one, vaccinate a large pro proportion of our population so that we're prepared for any upcoming uh, new strain or new outbreak. And the technologies are already there. Uh, like I said earlier and you referred to earlier, there are many vaccines and technologies which are undergoing various in various phases of trials so that we can uh, we have the technology and uh, the power to combat any new strain or any new pandemic and uh, the serum institute of india ha has always been uh, one of the largest manufacturers of vaccines and they do provide vaccines outside india to our neighboring countries and others through, and of course, we have a global collaboration, uh, the Vaccine Alliance, Gabi, which I had mentioned earlier, and yes, yes. Uh, COVAX uh, collaboration, which is uh, the vaccine pillar of the ACT program that is access to COVID uh, tools. So there's various um, organizations which are working on a global level. And of course, India is playing its part as well. So do you think uh, uh, people in, in the other countries who are not being able to afford vaccines will benefit through the Gary programs and uh, each and every human being living on the planet would perhaps get access to a vaccine now? Yes. So uh, a lot of poorer countries may not be able to indigenously yes. produce their own vaccines. And therefore, there is this global platform uh, with Gavi in collaboration with the WHO and the uh, CEPI, which is a coalition for epidemic preparedness, and uh, the COVAX um, uh, Foundation. So they all, uh, you know, kind of work in collaboration for ensuring accelerated development, production, and equitable distribution. So they ensure, and they have funding from various organizations. Uh, to ensure that even the poorer countries have access to the vaccines, even though they are not able to indigenously produce them. And so India is definitely doing, uh, playing its role in that and providing vaccines to countries where uh, who wouldn't be able to manufacture them, the vaccines themselves, such as uh, uh, in Brazil or Bhutan, Bangladesh, other countries. Absolutely. Well, one last question uh, uh, I'd like to ask you now. One last question is that uh, there is still some vaccine hesitancy being seen at most levels. People are saying, let's wait, watch, let the other person take it. Why is that when there are such few adverse effects? Why do you think that is there and how much more dialogue do we need to have um, on programs like this so that we, uh, you know, kind of quell their fears that it is indeed good for them. What would you like to say, Mark? Right. Vaccine hesitancy is an issue uh, globally. Uh, but the only thing that I'd uh, like to say, the best uh, way to put it, 
is that uh, the vaccine will definitely be less risky than having the disease itself. Though many people would uh, uh, say that they have had mild or asymptomatic illnesses, we in the hospitals and in clinical practice have seen very severe disease, uh, extensive mortality. And if you go to uh, data uh, globally and even in India, we have seen very bad and very severe uh, cases and extensive mortality with the disease. The mortality percentage may not be high, but because the pandemic has affected such a large population, the numbers, the gross numbers are very significant. And therefore, it is always better to err on the side of caution. So better <laughs> to prevent something than wait to get the disease and hope that you don't get a severe one. So vaccination is definitely like we had with measles earlier. You know, measles was a, a very a small uh, pox. Yes, polio. Yes, small pox. So equally, this is also an emergency uh, health issue. And if we have vaccines which are available to us, uh, I think we should take it because right now the number of cases are less, but we don't know whether this is a lull before the storm. Like UK is seeing a new strain and uh, uh, they are again being devastated by it. So we have a golden opportunity where we can take and reinforce preventive and control measures so that uh, we uh, further mitigate any upcoming outbreak or epidemic. So we cannot be complacent that the cases are less. Uh, we have to be prepared. And uh, vaccination is definitely one of the uh, proved preventive strategies, along with other control measures of uh, sanitization, masking, social distancing. That includes that, as well as uh, rolling out vaccination of our vulnerable groups, especially, which is being done by the current program. And on that very, very pragmatic note, I'd like to thank you for joining us for this very interesting, insightful conversation. And uh, to all our viewers, as uh, Dr. Sujata Matthew just shared with us, prevention is better than cure. So go for that vaccine. India is already proving vaccine Maitri to all its neighbors. And also, Vasudeva Kutambaka, the world is one family. On that note, I leave you all. Uh, this is a wrap of this edition of uh, Fact Thank you very much for watching. Namaskar. Thank you.